when we from the University of Miami arrived, there were about 180 patients, no nurses. There were five or six doctors. The doctors were sleeping on the floor. We had, our dispensary was a table with junk. We had no running water. All of a sudden, you guys appeared in your yellow shirts. We had people that, every time we turned around, you were there to do something for us. You were there to take over for us. You didn't say, here's what we want to do, you, to do. You said to us, what can we do? I can tell you that you have been one of the most invaluable groups. You have been everywhere we have needed you. You have never intruded in any way. You have been day and night. Every time we turned around, you were there. In fact, we who have been involved in this from the, the second day of the earthquake, are, we keep saying that every two hours we have a miracle. A miracle happens. You are part of the miracle. Suddenly we need, see something, we see your yellow shirts and you're there and we've been very, very pleased to have you. I have been in very close contact with the volunteer ministers and I have to say that this mission could not do it without them. I have, um, have two of them in my OR and they have never stepped foot in an OR and never seen an instrument before, but they picked it up within the day. Before the volunteer ministers came, it was very, very hectic here. We had a tent, like a BJ's tent, filled with supplies that no one knew what to do with, and they were just piled up. So we're in surgery doing operations and all that, and we didn't know what was in there. When the volunteer ministers came, they went into the, like, in this hot sauna of a tent with, you know, filled, it's like a circus tent, filled to the bottom to the top with boxes and um, went through each one and was um, really trying hard to um, separate them all, even though they didn't have experience. I just went in there and told them certain different things and they jumped right to it. They worked so well together. They made a chain and was passing boxes. Um, it was impressive. It was very, very impressive. And before, before they came, we didn't know what was there, how to use it, and we didn't have the extra people to go in and do this. And so without them, there would be supplies in there that would not be used today. Very, very needed supplies. I have to say that the ministry has done an excellent job. You know, everyone works together, the positive attitude, it's um, hands off. I give you all an applaud and thank you from the bottom of my heart. Well, I just uh, want to thank uh, the Church of Scientology uh, for uh, going to uh, great lengths and expense, I might add, uh, and seeing to it that people like myself uh, who wanted to help, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting there in front of my TV set looking at what's taking place here in uh, Haiti, uh, tears streaming down my face, uh, but not really having an ability to get here to do something. Uh, and so I was so glad when I got the call saying there was a seat on the plane and that I could leave right away. And so uh, I really thank the Church of Scientology. Uh, and uh, I had heard about the volunteer ministers. I didn't really have much experience with them. But now here on the ground, I see what the volunteer ministers are all about. Every day, the level of organization uh, increased. Uh, the level of chaos decreased. You know, and so I think a lot of that is due to the efforts of the volunteer ministers. The Scientology volunteer ministers uh, were angels of mercy uh, in a time of dire need here in Haiti. Uh, and so my hat is off to them. They've done a, a, a great job across the board, making it possible for others to come in and then do their jobs.